So I just learned a pretty easy way to connect frequency and wavelength from Dave Swallow. I'm working on a new podcast interview with him and he started talking about this. And the key is to think about the wavelength of one hertz. So let me show you how to get there. So the only two things you need to know to get started are the speed of sound in meters or feet, totally up to you. Um, I went with 344 meters per second and 1129 feet per second. Why did I do that? Well, at a normal temperature of 68 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 degrees Celsius, and an average relative humidity of normal like 50%, speed of sound is 344 meters per second or 1129 feet per second. Thank you to Merlin Van Veen for the speed of sound calculator here. That's all we need to know to get started. And from, from just knowing these two numbers here, 344 and 1129, we can quickly, really quickly calculate any wavelength from any frequency. Here's how we know that. Hertz is a unit of frequency equal to one cycle per second. So one Hertz equals one cycle per second. Right, so let's take a look at that. If one hertz is equal to one cycle per second, then um, in one hertz, the wavelength must be 344 meters per second, right? We talked about speed of sound, 344 meters per second. Uh, one hertz is equal to one cycle per second, so 344 meters, right? It's almost the exact same thing. One second, one hertz, same thing, 344 meters. From there, all we need to do is move the decimal place around. So if I go from one to 100, I'm adding two zeros behind this one, so then I just need to move the decimal place down two places. So instead of 344 meters, it's gonna be 3.44 meters. Okay, there we go. So, so a one, 100 hertz has a wavelength of 3.44 meters. And if I add another zero, that's three zeros, then I'll just move the decimal place down once more. So it'll be 0 0.344 meters. And we can convert that to centimeters. 34.4 centimeters is one kilohertz. If I add another zero, we just move the decimal place down again, so it'll be 3.44 centimeters is the wavelength of 10 kilohertz. And we can do the same thing in feet. So, if we know that the speed of sound is 1129 feet per second, by the way, I have mnemonic devices for these. I should have said that. It took me a long time to memorize the speed of sound. And the way that I do that um, for meters is pretty simple. I just remember the numbers 344 or 345. They're just in order. But for some reason, it was so much harder for me to memorize 1129. And the way I finally decided to do that was 11 minus two equals nine. So maybe that'll help you. If you can remember the number 11, 11 minus two equals nine, uh, 1,129 or 1,129 feet per second. Okay, so speed of sound, 1,129 feet per second. That means that one hertz must have a wavelength of 1,129, 1,129 feet, right? One hertz equals one second, one cycle per period, 1,129 feet. So if we're gonna add two zeros and make this 100 hertz, then we're gonna move the decimal place down one, two, so that'll be 11.29 feet for 100 hertz. And if we go up to 1,000 hertz, we'll move the decimal place one more time, and it'll be 1.129 feet for one kilohertz. And if we do that one more time and go up to 10 kilohertz, we'll move the decimal place down one more time, and it'll be 0 0.1129 feet for 10 kilohertz, or 1.35 inches. So this made a lot of sense to me. What I recommend you guys do is get out a piece of paper, just write down the speed of sound, and then calculate the rest of these by yourselves. Actually writing it down and making your brain do this little tiny activity will help you a lot. It sure did for me. I heard Dave said this to me and I didn't quite understand it at the time, but I came home and wrote it down. And as soon as I wrote it down, I was like, oh, this is super helpful. It's all the same number, it's all the same series of numbers, that is, three, four, four, every time you're just moving the decimal place. So 
I hope this helps you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.